So if you're not sure how to um, adjust your chain properly, that's uh, not as crazy as it might sound. Um, the best verification to check if your chain is more or less where it ought to be is you look down the middle and if your teeth on your sprocket rear sprocket is more or less equidistant and proportional in the middle of your chain then it's more or less where it ought to be and the reason i say that is i've got two kawasaki kz 750 twins in 1976 they're both more or less stock one i'm building this one for a little ride down into mexico it's got some good crash bars. It's a nice, simple bike, carbureted, very minimal electronics, um, and a nice, pleasant bike to ride around town. Um, but when you take the um, rear wheel apart, I put brand new tires on both of these things, and when you take the rear wheel apart and you measure the um, adjusters, then it becomes apparent that even between these two models, which are identical uh, motorcycles or supposed to be identical that there's a variance between the adjusters so for instance on this thing here this adjuster um, there's the difference in the hole diameter that goes over the axle is different that means it'll pull back just a little farther than this one and so even between models they're different um, to a tune of, I measured them, and it's the difference of 20.9 millimeters and 20.67 millimeters on a, yet another KZ750 twin I got out there. And that's a difference of 0.23 millimeters, which doesn't sound like a lot, and it's not really a lot. However, when you look at, say, these two adjusters, and you'll notice the stamping on this, there, one's a little crooked, one's a little more biased towards the front than the rear. And so that adds up to something. And then the stamps that they put on the marks on the swing arm aren't necessarily the same as the stamps on the other side of the swing arm. And so when you factor that in, and then you also factor in that this bike is almost half a century old, they both are, um, you know, they probably dropped a few times and maybe the swing arms just a little tweaked. Maybe the front ends just slightly tweaked. You know, they're not perfect. When they made the frames on these, they weren't perfect. They were always off just a little bit. And same with the swing arm. So the joints on the swing arm were pretty damn close, but there was a small variance between the bikes. So there's always variances in the manufacturing of these uh, products. And so it adds up quite a bit and so if you particularly have an old dinosaur bike like these and you're having problems with chain alignment then the best way to verify is to look down the sprocket now you think that's relegated to dinosaur bikes however it's not if you look at you know in the wide world of motorcycles um the japanese tend to be the best with their tolerances and even those guys get it a little wrong um and then as you migrate down the list, like say American and then British and then Italian, and then, you know, even like an old Ural, a Ural must be, must be crazy. Like the tolerance difference is on that. Matter of fact, no, it must be. I know it is because I've actually owned one. And yeah, there's quite a bit of differences in tolerances there. And so you'll notice that, um, um, like with the old Harley C, you know, late 80s, 90s evolution motors. And, and, and then the, the swing arm was actually, you're supposed to measure, I think, from the, the, the mounting, the pivot point on the swing arm back to the axle. But the problem is the axle's different on both sides because you have a nut on one side and then a, a mushroom end on the other. And so where you more or less measure to is a bit vague and especially as you get into belt drive models then you'll notice when you spin the wheel and it's up um, the belt will tend to migrate towards one side or the other and the chain does the exact same thing and so matter of fact on a on a 2012 uh, Can-Am slingshot say 
the belt, the the actually ask you to um, measure the belt distance from the edge of the sprocket, and that's per the OEM workshop manual. So, um, so it's not always that clear cut on adjusting sprockets, and you think, well. You know, especially in the world that you know, you get into sport bikes and they get dropped, and your swing arm gets a little tweaked, your front end's a little tweaked. It might not be uh, too much tweaked, but you might have problems though. Like, you know, you do the fork seals, and then you know, 5,000 kilometers later, the fork seal's leaking again, and particularly on the same side, and you do it a third time, and same thing. You might find that the the steering stem is tweaked or the Fork street. That's why you always look for crash damage when you work on a motorcycle and you take note of it. If you if you find crash damage on a motorcycle, it's it's really important to, to look further because it does have an impact on the overall you know totality of the function of the motorcycle. So so yeah, it's uh, so chain adjustment. A lot of people run around with the chains misadjusted. So you got to make sure that those teeth are in the middle. Um, yeah, and that's about it. I mean, you know, the, as per your manual, you'll adjust both sides, but be aware that you have to confirm. And then, too, when you loosen up the um, the uh, uh, rear wheel and you go to tighten it again, like some some bikes have a big nut on there, and when you when you torque that up, it'll actually move the wheel back, and so your chain will be too tight, and that means that it's moved, and then the alignment's off, and so you have on models like that, you have to leave a little slack in it. And then adjust it accordingly. So when you torque it up, it's where it ought to be. So it's it's not as clear cut as the manual would state on most uh, these motorcycles. So be aware of that. And um, this is a good quality chain. I, th I think I mentioned that it's it's a very good quality chain. It's um, DID. I don't know ZX something. It's actually it's right here. It's for uh, there's a, another master link 530ZVM-XZJ. I don't know what the tensile strength is. That's and here's the other thing. Uh, tolerance is in the uh, manufacturing. So they have these little tools and you put them on the sprocket and they're complete shit, of course, because when when <laughs> it's the whole sprocket sitting on a rubber cushion and those cushions uh, wear and then the sprocket may not be sitting right. You know it's it's less than perfect so your the rod may be off but um so when you buy substandard sprockets particularly Chinese sprockets the cuts between the teeth may not be uh, all the same you might have teeth that are different and and two the other thing to note with chains is that if you're buying chains these days chains are really expensive motorcycle chains used to be cheap but now they're quite expensive for a decent uh, like a really good quality DID like this because um, you know you look at a Chinese chain and uh, man you know they're, they're, they're just such poor quality the steel and what happens is if you run a cheap chain you might end up breaking it and, and at, at best it'll just spit off down the road and slide like a snake but um, you know, the other thing that could happen is it wads up around your counter shafts, right? Or rods, it wads up in your rear wheel, locks your rear wheel. Um, it usually either spits off, or if you're unlucky, it'll wad up in your crankcase area and it'll punch a hole in your motor and it'll take out if there's a water pump there, or, um, you know, whatever's there, clutch push rods. Yeah, it's just so run a good chain. I mean, it's it's just. And unfortunately, they're they're you know fairly pricey compared to what yeah, I mean. Say I really expensive, probably two three hundred bucks for a good chain, uh, Canadian anyway. And you probably you know down state side hundred and eighty or so for a good chain. So so be aware of that. Uh, shop around, and they'll have ratings on the chains too. Like like buy the proper chain for your you know Hayabusa. Don't you know cheap out. I mean I I go overkill with this stuff. This stuff's good for high abuse of drag racing apparently so for these bikes I mean it's overkill. And, but I get good mileage out of them as long as I keep it oiled so you know it's better to go too much than not enough in that area. Anyways I hope that helps a bit because there's a lot of YouTube videos and you know people just you know show you how to adjust the adjusters and, and there's a bit more to it than that for sure. 
and especially when you consider all the things I just cited. So um, that gives you some insight as to uh, if, especially if you're having problems with, uh, and what happens if it's misaligned is you'll get a shutter, like you'll, you'll be going down the road and you walk on it a bit and you'll feel a little shutter in the back. And, and that's your chain. If you happen to look back, you'll see your chain flopping around because it's misaligned and those oscillations add up and they accumulate into like waves. And so you're, you're your chain will start flopping around, then it'll go easy as you let off your um, throttle, things like that. So, and then you get a shortened life out of your chain as well if it's misaligned. That's the other big thing. And given chains are a bit pricey, chain and sprockets for decent chain and sprockets, and you want to make sure it's aligned and oiled. So, do check it. It'll uh, make your life so much easier. Anyways, um, hope that helps a bit. Uh, see you next time.